So here's some old rare footage that we have acquired since 2007 from the Thai archives. And finally just decided to share it with everyone out there. This is from ESSO, a Thai oil company responsible for sponsoring these types of cultural shows back in the 1960s. And I know that there's at least another link out there providing similar footage, but it would be completely silent and have missing subtitles. And so I just wanted to provide footage with narration to give you guys some guidance in terms of what it is you're watching. And hopefully for this episode, which is about Boy Baran, it would provide you guys with a general sense of how training used to be. This is part one of the old vintage footage that we have acquired. And in this particular episode, we see Krubua Wat Im, as he was known, a retired Moikorat fighter, perform a Y crew. And a Y crew is a pre fight ritual performed before competition and is meant to show respect to your teacher as well as showcasing your distinct style of Moi Boran. Because back then, each Moi Boran system performed Y crew in different ways based on their stance, their footwork, and how they throw techniques. And it's also important to note that Y crew of the old is based more on what they actually use in terms of fighting. And so it was less fancy. Whereas the Y crew that you see in modern Muay Thai could be very fancy based on bow and arrows, animals, and so on, you know. And so it's very different from how Y crew is performed back in the days. So here's a typical Muay Boran training session back in the days. And as you can see, even working on basic stances and basic strikes such as jabs, cross, uppercuts, hooks, basic elbows, is very different from how modern Muay Thai is trained, where the focus is more on the cardio training, whether it's jump ropes, pad training, clinching, light sparring, and so on. Because the emphasis now is more on pro training, competing in the ring. But back then, it's more of a martial arts training, where you focus more on getting the foundation down, working on your basic strikes, footwork, blocking and, and protecting yourself, defenses and so on. And so it's very different from the training nowadays in terms of modern Muay Thai. Here we see a Krubua Wat Im showing the fish elbow as it's known in certain types of Muay Boran, where each system again has their own name for it, but the execution of techniques are very similar. So each system of Moi Boran will have their own version of stance and footwork. And it's interesting to note that with Moi Korat, the stance is a more natural high stance, which is very similar to modern Muay Thai. And so in that aspect, we can say that the transition from old to new is very similar in terms of Moi Korat transitioning their stance to modern Muay Thai. Because Muay Boran is the ancient fighting style that existed prior to Muay Thai, there is a relationship between the two. However, there is a lot of differences as well. And so if you would like to get more information about how Muay Boran relates to Muay Thai, its similarities as well as its differences, then click to this link and find out more information. But here we can see some blocking and striking techniques. Again, is more of martial arts training as opposed to the cardio type sport training that you will see in 90% of the Muay Thai camps in all over Thailand. Again, the emphasis here is on self-defense. And so we work on blocking and striking at the same time. Footwork, in this case, the Muay Korat footwork is the more natural stance very similar to that of modern Muay Thai stance. Blocking and striking is a very common feature in Muay Boran because many of the Muay Boran styles will incorporate that, that concept where you block and strike at the same time. Self-defense is something that is always worked on in terms of knowing how to cover up, 
knowing how to defend against a kick, a punch, and then being able to counter right away. And these are basics that we apply in many of the Muay Boron techniques. And here's a drill in terms of blocking, kicking, parrying, kicking, redirect, kicking. And this is something that we do in many of the Muay Boron styles as well. Right here, the technique of pushing as you move in. That's why it's important not to kick open because when you do, you leave yourself open for a counter strike or a counter push. In this situation, you're working on the defense of attacking the attack, really. The concept here is attacking the attack. And grabbing the leg is something very common in many Muay Boran styles, not just Muay Korat, but in many other styles as well. You grab the leg, usually we use it to, to sweep people, to hit people, and take them down. And so this is a common concept in many of the Muay Boran styles, not just Muay Korat. You know, here, interestingly enough, here you knee the crotch area. Obviously, it's illegal in modern Muay Thai, but in Muay Boran, anything goes. So it doesn't really matter where you hit the person. The more dangerous parts, the more dangerous the area of striking is actually the better area to hit. And so with Muay Boran, we're working techniques that are more for self-defense and more for martial arts rather than sport aspect because back then you know Muay Boran is more of a fighting system. The training equipment back in the days is very different from the type of material we have today because nothing was manufactured back then and so everything was gathered from nature from the trees, branches, leaves, fruits. And here's an example of a striking ball that's created from natural materials. This is very typical of how training was back in the days because everything is gathered from nature, whether it's kicking banana trees, creating these uh, punching balls, and everything else. Another common training method that was applied back in the days was splashing water. And the splashing water is really a way to train your eyes so that you won't blink, especially in the heat of the moment or if you're getting hit by a punch or a strike. And so, one of the ways to do that is to splash water in your eyes constantly until your eyes get trained to sort of to not blink too much when you're in the heat of battle. After a hard day's training, usually fighters would go for a swim and this is also a good post-workout to enhance natural strength as well as cool down and even relax the body. If you would like to dig deeper into Muay Boran and find out more about the training methodologies of the past, the fighting concepts, as well as how Muay Boran is trained in today's environment, then go ahead and click this link. Back in the days, all the training equipment was rudimentary and had to be created from scratch. It's not like nowadays where you could just order something online, whether it's a plastic or a metal groin cup, because those didn't even exist yet. And so this is just a perfect example of the type of material that was used to create this groin protection. Also back then, Muay Boran fighters had to be bound in rope and that really served two purposes. One, the rope protected the hands and the wrist. And two, it was easier for you to hurt your opponent because when the rope gets wet and dries up, it gets brittle, making it easier to cut the skin. So everything that has to do with getting the fighter ready is part of a pre-fight ritual that still exists today. And you can see that in modern Muay Thai, when trainers getting their fighters ready with the hand wraps and wearing the Mong Kong and doing the prayer. These are all pre-fight rituals that existed even back in the day. And so another difference between Muay Boran and Muay Thai fighters is that back in the days, even though you started training at a young age, you didn't start competing until later in life. And this is because you still had to master the basics the transitions and all the different techniques because fighting back then is different from fighting nowadays where there's more rules and regulations but back then fights could result in severe injuries or even death and so fighters really had to know their stuff they had to know how to defend right they needed to know how to attack and they just had to be on top of their game because there's so much more to lose 
Nowadays, it's not hard to see kids start fighting even at the pro level. And this is part of the reason why modern Muay Thai fighters can have 200 to 300 fights easy. Although this vintage film only shows a few aspects of Muay Korat techniques, this is still a good visual example of how Muay Boran in general was trained before everything evolved into modern Muay Thai. So go ahead and follow this link if you would like to get more information about the origins of Muay Boran and how it evolved from ancient to modern Muay Thai. Thank you.